Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the climate systems on the Black Square Beechcraft Duke. Now keep in mind the climate systems are going to be slightly different depending on what version of the Duke you have, so we're going to be kind of taking a look at the two extremes and sort of how to manage it in uh, sort of my approach to it and all those other good things. Let's get started. So first things first, it's impressive to see that they took the time to really, really get into the details and kind of the minutia that is the climate system on board in aircraft. And believe it or not, especially this time of year, it's uh, I think 96 or 97 degrees today. It's pretty darn warm. Uh, getting these airplanes started is always going to be a process as well as uh, you know being, being able to manage a comfortable temperature inside is also going to be a pretty big process. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing, of course, in the real world is you know, you're loading packages in and out, you'll have the cabin door open, you'll be sitting there like you know, panting like a dog with the window open uh, just really trying to keep yourself somewhat comfortable here so what we're going to do is that we're going to get everything all nice and started for us and uh, then we're going to go ahead and play with some of these climate settings to sort of show you what they do all right we are fired up and rumble rumble rumbling so let's now see what we got here so now that we've got everything kind of warmed up and the engines are slowly kind of catching themselves so we can kind of take a look at the different components of the climate system so you can have a general idea of what it is you're kind of getting yourself up against kind of a thing. I'm just going to reset my engine monitor real fast here. Delightful. Uh, first things first is going to be our external temperature as well as our cabin temperature. As we can see right now, the cabin is a about 80 degrees, 26 on the C scale. So it's pretty toasty. It's a, not excessive, uh, but one thing we can probably check here. So we go down here, we can see the external temperature is actually 82. Wow, that's uh, that's warm enough. Uh, we're definitely pretty warm. Now, there are a couple different things we can do. Uh, now, we'll go ahead and uh, grab a little tablet here so you can get kind of a feel for some of the different settings here. Uh, one thing, of course, that we can do is uh, we can go ahead and open up the vents. And uh, there are a couple different vents that we have at our disposal for the purposes of uh, cooling us off inside this cabin. Let's go ahead and close that sucker. Let's go ahead and close the sucker. Again, this is relevant. Uh, the key thing here is you'll notice that we have one main vent here, this one right here. Uh, that's one that's going to be controlled by this one. This is the cabin air vent. And you can see that if I pull this towards me, I'm actually letting in air directly the blower is not currently running. So for whatever reason, if I wanted to grab air from the outside and just cook us right away, I could actually pull this handle out and then select the blower option. And now when we turn on the blower, you can actually see this little fan fires up. So what it's doing is it's actually sucking heat out of the combustion. It is also sucking heat out of the outside of the plane into its systems. And it's basically uh, going through the evaporator real quickly here and uh, letting it the rest of the plane. Uh, this is a very handy tool, of course, if you have something like carbon monoxide. Uh, one thing you'll probably notice on this is you see this little needle right here. This is the pressurization one. So of course, if that slams closed, um, you get no air, even though this is open, because again, we have to maintain a positive pressure inside of here when we get to our higher altitudes and things along those lines. So that's the first one we're going to have. The second one we're going to have is we're going to have two different vents for the purposes of keeping our pilots and co-pilots warm. Now, these are a little backwards. If you pull them out, you're actually closing them. So if you look here, do you see how these uh, two handles have closed my little butterfly valves? We've actually shut off air, and uh, the only air that is flowing now is actually the air in the back of the plane. And it's basically cooking the people in the back and not the people in the front. Now, if I were to push this open, you can see the little butterfly valve there adjusts itself. We'll go ahead and push this one real quickly here as well. Ah, got to reach over there. There we go. Perfect. And you can see very, very clearly that that's basically going to be allowing air directly in our faces here, which is pretty handy. Uh, the other thing we have, of course, at our disposal is a fan. And now uh, the fan has a a bunch of different speeds. So you'll notice we have kind of the cool mode on the left, and you notice we have kind of heat mode on the right here. Um, the fan itself, it's a pretty useful tool. It basically accelerates the process. So if I were to click this fan on faster, the only thing that's going to achieve is, is basically going to take the hot air, which you can already see is pretty warm in here, and it's just going to circulate it around the cabin and uh, just kind of get us warmer. I mean, it feels like the fan is helping, but it's really not helping much. It's worth noting too that you actually have a warning light on the other version of this. Actually, you can see it right here. We have a low temperature and a high temperature warning if it gets too in here. It's a kind of a handy little feature if you ask me sort of a thing. So right now um, it's warm and we want to try to make it cool inside this airplane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and you'll notice there's two different cool options. We have automatic cool and we have manual cool. If we pop this on to auto cool, uh, I can swing over here. You will notice that a couple different things are going to happen. Uh, first of all, if I look outside, you're going to see the little hatch for the air conditioner or condenser cooler is going to pop open real quick. The other thing you're going to observe is the fact that my air conditioner compressor is not running. Uh, it's basically just circulating coolant through here and it's uh, doing absolutely nothing. It's not cooling us off at all. The reason it's not cooling us off at all is because the RPM is too low on that particular engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my throttle here. and I'm going to give it just a little bit of power. It does not take much to get this thing to kick on. And uh, you'll notice the magical RPM here, I believe, is about 12 to 1300 RPM. 
So I'll just kind of bring it right up to about 1200 right there. That looks pretty good to me. Delightful. And what you're seeing now is our compressor starting to do its job. It's going to basically take all sorts of the heat. It's going to try to dissipate that heat and then it's going to send it right back. Uh, it's actually a pretty neat little cycle here. And again, this is running on its own. Make sure your parking brake is set, by the way. That scared me to death when I saw that van go by. So right now we're letting cool air come into the cabin and we're taking kind of sort of basically cooling things off a little bit. You can see we're about 83 here. Now, one of the things people miss with this is when it's on automatic, it's going to try to regulate how aggressively it's going to do this process. In my opinion, that's not enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click it to manual cool mode. When you slam it to manual cool mode, you're basically ordering this thing. You know, I don't care. Ignore the thermostat. Just, just, just YOLO. Give me as cold as possible. And one of the things you'll notice now is it's cooling off pretty quick. A really big mistake people make, by the way, is you notice that I've closed my exterior vent. If you open the exterior vent, you're going to be sucking air into this plane and trying to cool it and then distributing it around the cabin, which uh, doesn't really do much for us. As a matter of fact, you can take a look real quick. <laughs> not, not getting a lot of victory here. It's, uh, it's doing its thing. It's doing its thing, which I respect. Um, another thing you'll probably notice is you have these little defrosters. So one of the kind of things you can actually do here is if you want to have a little too, too much fun, is you can actually pull the handle for the defroster for the purposes of uh, trying to blow more air around. But to be honest, it, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I wouldn't even bother with it. A really important fact that you want to pay very extra close attention to is you notice these two intercooler shutoff valves here. These valves are basically going to allow heat to come right out of our system and cook us directly. Um, we're not going to worry about heating yet, so we'll deal with heating in a moment. At the moment, I'm just appreciating the fact that we've got some kind of air conditioning here, and it feels pretty good in here. Like it's, You can just see the haze in the air right now. It's just such a hot summer day. Now, you can taxi around with this thing on. Uh, there's really no consequence to that. Like Nothing bad is going to happen or anything along those lines, so you can just kind of let it like that. But you're not supposed to take off with it because it is robbing us of engine horsepower, number one. Uh, the other thing, of course, it's going to be doing to us to make our lives a little bit miserable is it actually creates an enormous amount of drag. You know, you actually feel the plane pull to the right when you have that particular component open. Uh, another thing you got to remember, too, is that when we're sitting here just kind of cooking away, make sure your mixtures are leaned out. Otherwise, you're going to get all sorts of nasty carbon build up on your spark plugs, which are going to make you slightly miserable. But again, you can see we're, we're cooling off real nice in here. We're cooling off real nice in here. Ah, happy day. What about heat? Oh man, <laughs> this looks cold. So uh, we're sitting here in uh, southern Argentina right now. It's of course the middle of their winter and it's a little frosty outside. So uh, we're gonna take a couple minutes to kind of get all this thing sort of squared away. So um, eesh, that's all I have to say. Also, who is the guy before me that cranked this so hard? Like folks, you really don't need to crank things like that. I turn that down a little bit. It's like, okay, the flood doesn't even need to be on. I'm, I can see perfectly fine without your help. There we go, great. So it is so cold in here, it is actually giving us a cold warning. So we need to figure out how to get us all nice and toasty. So let's go ahead and open up our little pad here. One thing I do want to do is I'll lean the mixture just a little bit here. I'm actually going to, um, it's going to take a very long time to get these cylinders up to any sort of reasonable temperature, but that's okay. As a matter of fact, if I were to go to my evil cylinder number four, as I always look, he's at 212 degrees. He's barely boiling. Oh boy, that's cold. That is all very, 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 very cold. We're gonna crack the cow flaps closed like a tiny, tiny bit here. All right, let's get this cabin warm. So a bunch of little problems we have to solve here. And you can see this cabin is uh, sitting here at 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to warm it up. So uh, what we can do now is we can go ahead and pop on the heat mode. And I'm actually gonna make sure the outside air is cold, it's closed. We don't wanna be heating outside air. And we actually have this handy dandy little device on board. Uh, this little thing here is a gas heater, which is awesome what it will do is actually take fuel away from the left tank start a little fire in here it's got a little spark plug and what it's going to attempt to do is it's going to attempt to slowly warm our cabin up here you can actually see how the temperature coming through all the different spots is actually slowly heating up uh, one of the things we would do in the real world that uh, you don't I really have to deal with here is we'd actually do one of these things and uh, the reason we pull those closed is for the purposes of basically allowing it to build up some heat before we start blowing the cold air in our face because you can see the internal temperature in here is actually incredibly cold so um yeah, kind of a thing like that now the other thing you'll find probably interesting is we actually have two different sources of heat in addition to that uh, we have big engines and uh, these things of course are nice and cool right now so we can actually take heat off of those engines for the purposes of uh, warming us up in here so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to increase my rpm a little bit here which is going to be perfectly fine given how insanely cold it is outside it's like minus 40 or something like that it, it's cold enough we're going to get about 1400 revolutions per minute obviously keep in mind we'd be sucking all sorts of nasty like snow and stuff around so be careful and what you'll observe here is the temperature of my two intercoolers spikes so what i'm going to do is two things first of all i'm going to snap this into manual heat mode what that's going to do is basically say hey 
turn on give me everything you've got as far as heat uh, that's definitely going to help a little bit uh, the second thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the vents that allow us to get heat off of the engines and uh, normally they basically get cooled off before we get any pressure air in here we're going to tell it instead of cooling that air off with the intercoolers we're going to say just blow it right into the cabin it's fine so what i'm going to do is pull these two handles one two just like that i'm actually going to put on the cabin air again i'll be there's no reason to leave that closed and as soon as we do that of course that means there's hot air coming from our lovely engines being poured into the cabin. As a matter of fact, if you look here, you can see that the color of the air that is now getting blasted in here has gone from that nice uh, kind of like casual blue color to this hot air. Uh, we are literally blasting heat off the engine directly in the inside here. We can actually uh, just, theoretically could bring down the vent blower a little bit to kind of take the edge off of the temperature in here. One thing we're going to be dealing with pretty soon is going to be ice on the windshield, but it's pretty darn cold, so I'm not worried about it too, too much. So you can see here that we're basically cooking ourselves in here by using heat that comes off the engine. Now, if you want to be an awful person, which um, I don't uh, recommend this, uh, we wouldn't do this in the real world, but if you were in a hurry to get warm, there's nothing stopping you, of course, from increasing the heat production of the engines for the purposes of uh, getting us warmer. And of course, if we increase the heat of the engines, more fire is going to be sprayed on our faces. Uh, you can see here that the temperature coming at us now is awesome. It's uh, uh, basically, we're almost to about freezing in here, uh, just to give you an idea of just how much heat we're producing inside of this plane at this time. Now, it's going to take several minutes, but you can already see I'm up to one Celsius here. And a few more minutes of just leaving it like this, eventually we're going to get pretty darn warm in here. But obviously, as we're doing this, now we have to pay close attention to our cylinder temperatures, which at the moment are actually getting really, really warm because we're just sitting here with no cool air moving over them at all. So as you can see, I'm up to 351 on the cylinders already, just to give you an idea of just how hot these things are. We can't keep it this way. Uh, we're basically going to overheat our aircraft if we do so. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reduce this back down to a more uh, sustainable level. Again, like I said, about anything around 1200 RPM is probably about peak you're going to get for winter time. And now, of course, we have a new problem. Now we have to slam our cow flaps closed because we warmed our engines up to 360 degrees. And um, of course, uh, at 360, we need to maintain that a little while and again it's still plenty warm we actually could crack our cow flaps open a little bit here to not overheat but you can see the temperature difference of the air that is getting blown in here at least it's 43 degrees so one of the things you have to be mindful of uh, whenever you're doing anything with the climate in an airplane is the danger, of course, of getting uh, carbon monoxide in here. So I'm going to flip this over to auto. By the way, if you want to adjust the heat by hand, you can tweak this right here. Um, it'll actually tell you your target temperature there. So if I go like that, you can see my target temperature is 72. It'll try to balance the heat system. It doesn't do a good job. If you're absolutely frozen, like no joke, just slam it into manual, get it up to 72 then slam it on auto. Otherwise, honestly, it is never going to come up, warm up inside this plane. It's just not going to do it. Uh, one of the things you have to be awesomely careful for with this plane, if you go to failures, and I'll okay, we'll come down here, you can actually search failures. Uh, monoxide, uh, carb, actually, see, I think it's at CO. Carbon, uh, carbon, uh, there we go. Cabin heater carbon dioxide leak. Um, this one's really, really nasty. Uh, this occurs to us. Uh, basically, you're going to be blasting carbon monoxide in the airplane. So to give you an idea of what this looks like, I'm actually going to press fail now, right now. And we're immediately going to get a warning. If that happens, you've got to shut that off immediately. If I go to the cabin, um, if, actually, if we turn that, uh, we'll turn it back on like an idiot here. But with this uh, carbon heater, seal this gray, this is going to kill us all. And um, you can see it flooding inside the cabin. Next thing you know, I'm going to start blacking out and all sorts of nastiness is going to happen. Uh, normally, what we do in that case, of course, is that we have to dump the cabin as fast as we can. We have a handle for that over here if we need to do so just to get the air clear because um, that stuff will kill you. And it's uh, very, very subtle. But you can see we've now lost our heater. But the interesting thing here is with your heater out of condition, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't keep the cabin warm because we still have those big angry heaters kind of hanging out there. The problem, of course, now is we have to isolate that particular system. And unfortunately for us, the way they design this, if you go through all that lovely circuit breakers, the only thing we actually have control over here is our cabin temperature control. If we were to pull that sucker out, and uh, we were to go ahead and try to turn manual heat on, for example, uh, one of the things you'll observe is this system won't actually kick on at all. So we're uh, completely reliant on uh, whatever nice little heat we're going to get. But the other thing you're going to observe is because we're on that specific mode, we now no longer have the blower access to this one. So unfortunately for us, we're kind of sunk in that sort of regard. And again, you could see that thing. Uh, we'd be basically descending in a hurry because we're going to be positively freezing our butts off kind of a thing like that. Um, the only thing I found to kind of play with, though, is to essentially try to disable the air conditioner 
turn the blower up on maximum and then leave it on manual mode for the purposes of trying to sort of get some of the hot air sort of blasting around here. You know, if I go down to my blower here, even though we're not going to be getting a direct heat, at least we're going to be getting some heat flowing and we do have access to the blower fan here. So it's trying to sort of push some of the heat in. And you can actually see here, if I really crank this up, which I feel sorry for these engines that being so mean to them, you will get some heat coming out of it, but not nearly as much as you would otherwise. And again, the moment you flick that thing back on, now you're basically going to be asphyxiating yourself in here. So as you can see, it's a relatively straightforward system on board. And there's a couple little things you have to kind of be mindful of as far as uh, being able to safely operate all these different controls. Uh, one thing I do appreciate is the fact is they do give you the ability to go ahead and start pulling things out if you want to start doing what I like to kind of call troubleshooting if you start getting issues. But the important thing you have to remember is your little heater on this thing will not keep you warm past a certain temperature. You will need a little bit of help. But the op opposite is also true. If you're at high altitude, you crank the heat up, start descending to lower altitude, and you forget to push these two handles in, it's gonna get hot. Enjoy.